Squeak's hammer is fun, but it is also really heavy. And honestly, I think I can do better because you know what? You can 3D print whistles. So let's try it. Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. And honestly, these whistles can be quite good. I mean, this one here is a two-tone train style whistle, which actually works pretty well and doesn't take a lot of air to actually get a sound out of. And it's on the floor now. Uh, and there are other little whistles around as well. I will link all of the Thingiverse links for these or Printables links for these in the description below if you want to mess around with them. Uh, some of them are quite small, which helps, but they're also still work and do things. And then some of them are very loud uh, if you're on headphones, sorry. Uh, very, very loud. I'm not even sure if my mic is gonna pick that up because it's loud and very high pitched. So I was thinking that I could attach these into my own hammerhead because these things are massive. And yes, we've seen in the past that this has helped to the robot from like tipping over and things, but 40 grams is too much weight. And we also don't have bellows on the back here, so we can't squeak on the return. I'm thinking if we can get a smaller whistle like this into the axle or into the handle of the hammerhead, we'll actually be able to get a lighter weight hammerhead and maybe get bellows on the back. But to do that, we need to print some TPU. So to start with, I tried a standard bellows style print with a single wall of TPU, but as you can see, this thing is falling apart and has holes in it and just uh, the base didn't print. Like there is a lot, a lot wrong with this particular one. So I tried again and it failed, <laughs> just entirely. Uh, it just, yeah, a whole mess happened at the top here. Uh, and I tried again, this time with two layers on the walls, and this actually came out pretty well and does kind of bellows a little bit, but if you push it too far, it can get stuck in itself and it's just a little not flexible, really, and doesn't actually push a lot of air out. So uh, I changed tack again and went for something a little bigger. Now this one, this one kind of sort of worked, for about 10 minutes. Yes, I did this off camera and uh, didn't do the first test with you guys, but uh, it did work by like pushing down and it gave a small amount of whistle. Uh, but as you can see, this does not self return, which is a problem. And also because it's a very thin wall print, it's starting to have holes in it. I have no idea how well this is picking up on camera. Black TPU is hard to film as it turns out. Hopefully you can see this nice big gash in it. That happened from testing. Uh, it was actually a solid print somehow uh, off the printer, but yes, it breaks every time you push it in and it does not self return, which again, not really good for a squeaky hammerhead. So we're gonna try something different. We've, I printed some cups up. These ones, this one is a vase mode print. For those of you who've done some 3D printing, uh, it is a single layer that just kind of wraps all the way around. It's also got some holes in it. Although I pumped up how much plastic was going out through the nozzle, it's still not perfect. I don't know if this is gonna push any air at all. And then I did a two wall version two. And to fit those into the whistle, I printed some top plates. So we're actually gonna glue these in place. Okay, with these glued up, I've added some extra bicarb soda and extra glue around them because after the first kind of glue up, I tried to compress them and I got the glue breaking. So we've just reinforced that as much as possible. And we're actually gonna give these a quick little tester. Now, these actually weren't designed for, well, these uh, holes in the top weren't designed for this particular whistle. They were designed for a different one entirely, but I have lost that somewhere along the way. So we're just gonna try this guy out. Now, this is the single wall print uh, vase mode style that does have a few holes in it, but we'll see if we can get anything out of this. Okay, yes, and that's not very sealed at this point. So that actually seems like it works. Now let's just try throwing a bit of blue tack on the sides of this whistle. That might help seal this up just a little bit. 
and increase our performance here. Of course, as with the other hammer, the actual triodes toy, the speed is going to be key. The faster the hammer swings, the more air we're gonna get through the thing and uh, the more sound out of it. So again, that's blue tack. Let's just, whoop. Hey, that actually worked out pretty well. And the single wall is holding up okay. Even with the, um, the cracking in it that I saw, it actually makes a decent amount of air. Cool, okay, that is workable for sure. So let's try it on the other one. This is the double wall print, which I did because I basically needed, or I wanted to make sure that I sealed the thing up. We're gonna move the blue tack down and try again. I am expecting this one to be harder to compress, which probably means less air and less sound but let's blue tack it down again. And. Oh yeah, that's a lot harder to compress, but once it gets compressed, it actually gives, I think, more air in. So maybe we need to do double layer, but with the kind of like bellows compression on it that I did before, that might help with the compression forces and give that a little bit more air. This whistle and this bellows is actually working pretty well together. Uh, I'm not sure how well that's gonna work hitting the thing. Yeah, no, uh, especially not with this connection point between the two, which is not great. All right, the whistle has been glued in, this is it. Uh, let's see if we can actually get a decent whistle out of this tiny little whistle and this bellows. Oh yeah, wow, okay, that was way louder than our train whistle. I think this is the go. Yeah, that's not taking much air at all. Like it's taking a tiny little, ah, oh, and it's making sound even with just very small compressors. This is, yeah, 100% the go. Thanks to my 3D printing filament sponsor, 3D Printworks. So that is all of the parts printed. We have two new bellows. We have a whistle, double whistle chamber with a gear on it. And of course we have our splitter, which should hopefully, all going well, connect onto here and allow us to connect the two bellows. I, there was a couple of different options for this, but I went with this particular option because it was easiest to CAD separately and do this way. We may need to very, very quickly just clean up some of this print to get this to work. But other than that, it should actually go together pretty well. Hopefully, he says, not able to actually get it together. But we do need to do the weight check. This is actually close enough now that we can actually weigh this and see how much the new system is gonna weigh. The old system, remember, was 40 grams, so we wanna be under that. And Hopefully we are. Oh, 10 grams under that. Beautiful, that should actually make this whole thing swing just a little bit faster. And there it is, our own. Oh, that's leaking a little bit of glue still. That is fine. Hopefully it all seals up. I might throw a little bit of accelerator on it, but I am gonna very quickly give this a test and then I need to actually get out to the next event where I'm gonna fight with this. So fingers crossed that it works. Okay, let's give this thing a test. No squeak at all, that's really unfortunate. Well, the hammer is at least better. Uh, so I'm gonna need to work out how to get these TPU bellows to compress more because these are vase mode prints. They should compress quite well, but they don't. So I'm gonna have to work that out. But anyway, for now, that is gonna be time to go fight. So it's a few days later and unfortunately this has not been going particularly well. I made some changes to the hammer design as you can see here. Uh, this is the old one that I actually did take and did fight and it still doesn't really work. I mean look, the front one does whistle if you push it with two thumbs uh, and get a good kind of push on it. It works a little bit, it's okay, it's not great. 
I honestly think that the big error in this particular design is that the whistles are in the main connection piece or aren't in the crossbar but are down towards the gear which means the air being pushed from the bellows needs to go in and turn the corner before getting to the whistle which is probably slowing air down and all that kind of stuff. Also I didn't have my TPU settings set quite right for both of these bellows. The front bellow is okay uh, but the back bellow is just too soft and has, well, not too soft, it has too many holes in it because I hadn't got my TPU settings quite right for that one. Uh, so in the end, this was just a massive, massive flop. And I thought that the problem might have been cross-sectional area, as in not getting enough air movement. Uh, and also I thought that the ridges that I'd put in the bellows, which is kind of what all commercial bellows have, it was just adding extra corners and that would be points that kind of resisted the compression of the bellows. Um, so I made this version, which is just a big disc. Well, it's an empty disc, I should say. Again, it is just one wall thick printed in vase mode, although there is quite a number of base layers in here, three or four, I think, from memory. And this one, this one is really good by hand. It gets a lot of air through the whistle and it does a really good job. Even pushing it with one hand, you can actually get a decent amount of airflow through it and you can whistle the whistle quite well. Uh, unfortunately, that isn't the case when you run the hammer as an actual hammer and hit things. Well, at least when you hit the floor. As it turns out, sometimes having something else in the way, you can get a few very little squeaks out of it, but it's just not compressing enough. And I think it may be uh, basically this rim around the edge here, and also the fact that the base plate is, or the base in here is four layers thick. It means it's more rigid than the rest of the system. So I wanna try and chamfer this bottom corner and then maybe run only two bases in it and see if that works. The other thing I did try was chamfering really far and going back to the small size bellow. Unfortunately, this doesn't really work at all. This one I haven't even glued together. I've just blue tacked it in place as a bit of a tester. And yes, it doesn't even whistle uh, by hand. And it's got another problem. It doesn't stay, uh, it doesn't self return. So sorry, I should say it does stay. So when you push this thing in, oh, that actually whistled that time. That's surprising. It very, very rarely whistles, but when it does, uh, it doesn't actually self return, which means that it's a one shot whistler, which is not great. And yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, it also doesn't work on the robot and I didn't even take any test footage of this because it's just not worth it. Uh, so I have one more chance at this, or well actually two. I have, the next shot is going to be the big version again, but this time with the thinner base on it. Like, oh, come on. I can get a whistle out of tapping that. How is that not whistling when it's hitting something? That's just ridiculous to me. So hopefully the thinner base will get that working for us. But if not, I also, this is just a generic TPU. Uh, I have some filament that was labeled rubber. I cannot remember what it was, where it came from. It is very, very old. It is really soft. It is hard to print, uh, but it may, may just give us the kind of flexibility of print material we need to actually get a big bellow like this working. All right, well, I am officially out of ideas. I did the things I said I was gonna do. I printed a new version with a softer base in it. This worked about the same as the old one did. And then I printed this one with this weird rubber material that I have no idea what it is. And it also works about the same. Let's just do that on camera so you know, uh, so you can see what's going on here. It works totally fine if we hit something with it. Well, if something hits the center of the squeaker here, 
Oh, and also if it's the blue tack holds because I haven't even bothered to glue this into the whistle because I was just testing it. And blue tack seals it well enough to do the job. So if we square up the wheel right with the center of the hammer and then swing it, we get a nice good squeak. But if we line up literally anything else, we don't. And if we don't hit anything, we don't get a squeak either. So really we need to hit a sharp point that kind of depresses the middle of this squeaker and that's when we get a squeak. Which I can just do by hand here. But yeah, if we hit a corner or anything, we don't really get any kind of squeak out of that. Now I thought, oh, okay, well that's a really easy fix then. We'll just make the whole hitting section corner. So I made a rounded version here. So put the spherical sections in a different orientation. This was a nightmare to print because trying to print these curved walls and have them sealed is very, very hard to do. Uh, either it needs to be printed that way on the build plate, which means it gets a bit messy underneath and therefore there are gaps, or it needs to be printed that way and then there's a lot of overhang, which is hard to deal with when you're also using your settings to do good walls on the outside edges. Uh, so this was a pain to print and it didn't work either. Uh, it does compress okay, but if I just like hold a whistle up to this, uh, you can see that I don't actually get a whistle sound out of it at all, which all these other ones, even if you just hold it up to it, you do actually get a whistle sound. So if I put the old one on, we get a whistle sound. If I, we get a good whistle sound. So this one, you just don't get that, which I think means that there's two, like there's actually holes in here that I haven't seen and haven't fixed yet. Uh, so yeah, it just didn't, didn't work. I think the idea is good, but for some reason, this just does not move enough air to do this. So anyway, I'm gonna give up on this for now. I think this version is probably what we're gonna run with going forwards. I've got another one of these printed, so I'll glue this all together and use that uh, eventually in the future. But I'm just a little bit disappointed at all of this. I've got other ideas of maybe doing like flat shapes that get folded and glued on one seam just to kind of avoid the like rings of corner that get printed into things which are very, very hard to compress. Maybe, I don't know, if you've got any other ideas that you think would work for uh, making the bellows of this squeaky hammer actually work, please let me know in the comments down below because yeah, I am very, very ready to just not really do this anymore. Like we've just got parts everywhere and I've even got more than this out in my printing room because yeah, I've printed a lot of things trying to get this to work. Anyway, that is gonna be it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.